Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Getting Started series. This multi-part series is designed to get users proficient in the tools and capabilities available within the Quick Train Modeler software. This chapter provides information on downloading the Quick Train Modeler trial and sample data, a high-level overview of the layout and settings, as well as useful terminology used throughout the series. If you haven't done so already, please visit AppliedImagery.com and click on the download page. Here, you'll find the download options for both the USA and international versions of the Quick Train Modeler, as well as instructions on how to activate the license. If you would like to follow along with the same sample data used in the Getting Started series, please scroll to the bottom and you'll find the sample data options to download. Let's get started by taking a look at a loaded workspace and understanding the sections of the Quick Train Modeler interface. At the top, you'll find our menu bar and toolbar, which provide quick and easy access to some commonly used functions in the Quick Train Modeler software. Underneath that is our layer tree. This is where Qt Modeler automatically sorts and organizes all of your data loaded. Below that is our mini-map, which provides additional context as an overview of all of your data loaded. And at the bottom of the screen is our status bar, which among other things shows the coordinate readout of the cursor location. And the last section is the main 3D viewing window, which we call our model space. Again, the layer tree is where all of your data is organized and sorted. We can see over here on the left-hand side that there's a folder structure. At the very top is special overlays where we can toggle certain mapping elements on and off. We scroll down a little bit, we can see that there are models that are broken down into two subfolders, point clouds and surface models. By looking at all of my point clouds loaded, I have 16 of them, I can toggle them on and off individually by clicking the checkboxes, or turn them on and off as a group by clicking on the folder. Each line item can be expanded, and I can see what other information is contained within that file. In this case, as I discussed earlier, the vertex colors currently has the intensity values, and I can again toggle them on and off by clicking on the global vertex color button here, or toggling them on and off individually as needed. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see that we also have surface models loaded. I'm going to go ahead and turn a surface model on. So I can look at my surface models and my point clouds loaded in together. I'm going to turn off the rest of my point clouds so we can see the surface model a little clearer. As we scroll down further in the layer tree, we can see that we also have vectors. Vectors is another data type. They usually come in points, lines, or polygons. In this case, this is a range ring, which is concentric circles that are right now centered on the arena here. Another data type are markers. At its very core, markers are XYZ locations, and we can append additional information to these. They're also the basis of many of our line of sight tools, such as drop lines and line of sight. Just like the other line items, I can left click, right click, and or double click on them. So if I double click on the arena, it'll take us to it. Textures are another data type. When you see textures, just think of orthophotography. This is overlaid imagery on top of your 3D data. So we're in a completely 3D environment. This really gives us a really nice photorealistic feel to the data as we start to fuse different data sources together. As we scroll on down through the layer tree, there are also something called bookmarks and movies. These aren't quite data types, but more elements in the scene. So I can click on a given bookmark and it'll take me to that location. So if I want to find my new bridge, I'm going to click on my new bridge and it'll take me to it. Principal Park, and again it takes me there. And finally brings us to movies. There are a few ways to generate movies in Qt Modeler. One of them is by stitching together a few of these bookmarks and Qt Modeler will interpolate through as we go on. And other types are based on predetermined lines. You can think of everything in your layer tree as well as all of your settings as your workspace. So if you ever want to save all of this data and come back to it at a later date, these buttons up at the top of the layer tree, Open Workspace, Save Local Workspace, and Export Portable Workspace, will help you do that. And finally, there's a lot of additional information and resources within the Help menu. Go to Help, and then you can open up the Help document here. Another nice resource to check in from time to time is the Hotkeys and Shortcuts. This does a really good job of introducing tools that you might not be aware of, and also shortening workflows by introducing some hotkeys. If you have any questions or feedback about the content of this chapter, or any other topics in the Quick Train Modeler, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.